Here's our fourth example. This is two boxes connected by a cord. A person pulls horizontally on the first box, box A, with a force of 40 newtons. The boxes have masses of 10 kilograms and 12 kilograms, respectively. Ignore friction between the boxes and the tabletop. Now, our diagram over here shows us everything that uh, we need, so we're not going to need to draw a diagram. We will need to draw free body diagrams, and that's, that's uh, parts A and B of this problem. And then from there, we'll be able to work out um, net force equations and then find both the acceleration of the system and the tension in the cord in between. Here in our first part of our example, we're asked to show the free body diagram for the box B. Box B is the box here in the rear. I'm drawing a box around it, a square around it, and I want you to think of that as a picture frame. You can only see what's inside the picture frame. And that's how we're going to uh, develop our free body diagram. So everything outside of this box just doesn't matter. We've used the dot to represent the box. The box has two forces acting on it in the vertical direction. First, we have a weight. We have the mass of the object, m sub b, and I use that because this is box b, times g, and a normal force to offset it. So the object is resting on the surface, there's no net force acting on it, so we have the two, gravity and the, net and the normal force. In the horizontal direction, if we look carefully, we only see the rope that's attached to here. We don't know anything else about it, but we know there's, it's taut, there's a tension on it, so we're going to draw another force, which is a tension force pulling to the right. The only thing that's left to consider is the acceleration, and again, there is a force pulling to the right. There is no resisting force to the left because we've been told to ignore friction. Therefore, there must be an acceleration also moving to the right. Here in part B, we're asked to show the free body diagram of box A. Box A is the box at the front. I'm going to draw a picture frame around this as well. And we're going to concentrate just in this area to draw our free body diagram. So we'll use our usual dot to represent the box. And this time in the vertical direction, we have a weight, which is denoted mg. Here we use the subscript a because this is box a. And Exactly opposing that, we have a normal force, F sub n. Now let's look in the horizontal direction. There are two forces, one pulling to the right. That's the applied force. That's where we see the hand pulling. And in the other direction, opposing it, we have a tension that's in the cord that connects the two boxes. The last part of our diagram is to show an acceleration, and again, the acceleration is moving to the right. The applied force is larger than the tension. Here in this third part of our fourth example, we're asked to find the acceleration of the system. So let's start by listing the information that we have. We have the mass of box A, which is the one at the rear. 12 kilograms. The mass of box B, the one at the front, which is 10 kilograms. And um, we also know the applied force. Let's call it F app. That's 40 newtons. So how do we find this? Well, let's start by writing the net force equations for each one of these. So we start always with Newton's second law. So for box A, we get 
the net force on A is the mass of A times the acceleration. Same thing, write the same expression for box B. That's going to be the mass of box B times the acceleration. Remember, these accelerations have to be the same because they're connected. Um, if one accelerated more than the other, the uh, rope would stretch or it would snap. So let's, let's return to um, looking at object A. What are the forces here acting in the horizontal direction? Well, there's only one. There's only one that we saw if we went back to our diagram, and that is a tension force moving to the right. So if we define right as positive and left as negative, we have that the tension force is equal to the mass of A times the acceleration. What about in the case of, of B? Well, in the case of crate B, we've got uh, two forces acting horizontally. One is the applied force in the positive direction. And opposing it, we have the tension force, the same tension force that we have on box a. So this is going to be mass B times A. Now we want to get the tension force by itself, so what I'm going to do is add Ft to both sides. So I get the applied force is equal to M sub B times A plus the tension force. And as you can see on this side, I've added and subtracted it, so it's, it's gone. The next part I want to do is I want to get force of tension by itself, so I'm going to subtract this term, mb, m sub b times a, the mass of b times a, so I end up with the applied force minus mass b times acceleration is equal to f of tension. So there are, there are two equations for tension. So we want to find the acceleration. So what we'll do is what we've done in the past, which is we'll equate um, Ft. And that way we'll just end up with one expression, which is mass A times acceleration, which is this first one, is equal to the applied force minus the mass of B times the acceleration. We want to get acceleration on its own, so I'm going to add uh, mass of B times A to both sides. So I'm going to get mass of A times acceleration plus mass of B times acceleration is equal to the applied force. My next step, I want to um, uh, pull A out of this expression. So I'm going to have MA plus mb times a is equal to the applied force. And now I want to divide through by uh, the masses, and I just get a on its own, acceleration on its own. So it's just the applied force divided by the mass of object a plus the mass of object b. So um, this is kind of interesting, because if we look at this result, what it says is, that um, what we're basically doing is, as we apply a force to a pair of joined objects, the acceleration is just the same as if we would have applied the force to one object of a combined mass of ma plus mb. Now let's evaluate. The applied force was 40 newtons, and our combined masses are 12 kilograms, and 10 kilograms. And if we put this in our calculator, we're going to get 1.82 meters per second squared. So um, that's our the value of our acceleration, and it's going to go to the right. So we're going to use that um, in our next part. Here in our last part of problem four, we're asked to find the tension in the cord connecting 
objects A and B. There are two approaches we can take. We can either use the tension expression or the net force expression that we have for object B, or we can do it for object A. As I've said before, the easiest approach is to find the simplest expression. And the simplest expression will be the one that has the fewest forces. So in this case, it's going to be for object B. So the net force equation or Newton's second law equation for object B looks like this. And if we look in the horizontal direction, there's only one force pulling on object B. And that is the tension. So the tension is very simply defined as the mass of object B times the acceleration of the system. If we look, we have that information. The mass of object B is 12 kilograms. And the acceleration we derived in the last part of uh, this problem, which is 1.82 meters per second squared. So to find the tension force, is a simple substitution. We have 12 kilograms times 1.82 meters per second squared. And a quick calculation of that gives us 21.84 newtons. To check whether this makes sense or not, what we, what we know is that that tension can't be greater than the uh, applied force that's there. And in fact, that is the case. The applied force was 40, and we're getting 21.84.